this discussion applies uh, regardless of uh, what type of uh, setup you have, whether it's motorhome to dinghy, motorhome to trailer, fifth wheel, travel trailer, virtually anything that has trailer light wiring involved, uh, this discussion is applicable. If you know your history, way back when, Nikolai Tesla and Thomas Edison uh, were at odds between AC and DC. Uh, Thomas Edison argued that AC was dangerous. Nikola Tesla said that DC had excessive voltage drop. Well, that excessive voltage drop is an issue still today, and it is what is the reason for this video because you can find that you may not have sufficient uh, voltage going to your taillights on your towed vehicle or trailer if the wiring is not sufficient. Now, the wiring has to do with the voltage drop, not necessarily the current capability. So in other words, you may have wiring that is far beyond the current capability, but still can result in uh, too much voltage drop so we have to size the wire for voltage drop, not the current handling capability. Unfortunately, the typical four-wire zip cord style of trail wiring is often insufficient. It is most typically 16 gauge. However, you can usually find it in 14 gauge, and in some cases 12 gauge, which uh, usually means you got to research it on the internet and order it because you're not going to find this at most trailer stores in the 12 gauge wire size uh, and even some of the cheap stuff is 18 gauge which you may find to be woefully inadequate the overall limiting factor here is distance consider this drawing where we have a battery and a light bulb with 10 feet of wire of unknown gauge now if you look at the uh, voltage on the battery and it shows, say, 12 volts, uh, then if you take a reading at the light bulb, you'll most certainly see a voltage drop. Here I'm showing 11.9 volts, which in all practical purposes is adequate. You have to expect some voltage drop in the wire as long as that voltage drop is not too excessive. And the voltage drop that you have in a wire is a function basically of the wire length and the current that passes through that wire. Now if we take that same circuit and extend that wire from 10 feet to 20 feet, something interesting happens. Now we're using the same gauge wire, we're using the same light bulb, the same battery and everything else. But here uh, it shows 12 volts at the battery but only 9 volts uh, at the light bulb. Where did that other 3 volts go? Well, the 3 volts is being dissipated by the 20 foot wire. Now this is admittedly an extreme case, uh, but you kind of get an idea of what's really going on here. So just realize with DC uh, wiring, as Nikolai Telsa proved, the longer the wire, the higher the voltage drop. And the best way to compensate usually for that is using a larger gauge wire, even though the smaller gauge wire may be adequate for the current capability that you need. It may not be adequate for the voltage drop. That's an important concept. So here we can see another representation of what we're looking at. R1 is uh, the positive side of the wire. R2 is the light bulb or the load. And R3 is the negative side. So essentially the wires look like resistors uh, in the DC circuit. Now in small circuits short circuits you know very short wire runs you don't really have to worry quite as much about the voltage drop due to the uh, wire uh, distance but when you're getting into the long distances uh, which you're going to find in a trailer situation then this uh, phenomenon starts to be significant well, fortunately, we have a mathematical formula that can help us in to determine whether our wiring is sufficient or not. And this is CM equals uh, K times I times L over E. CM is the circular mills of the wire, or basically the wire cross section. K is a constant of 10.75. I is the current flow flowing through the wire in amperes. L is the round trip length of the wire in feet, 
and E is voltage loss in volts. So you can uh, interpolate this formula any way you need to to get the different values. And in fact, I show at the end of this uh, presentation the different iterations of the formula, as well as uh, what the different circular mills are of the more popular wire gauges. So uh, when you get to the end of this presentation, you'll be able to uh, do your own calculations. So let's look at a typical situation. We have a motorhome here uh, with a umbilical cord going from the motorhome to the Jeep and then uh, the Jeep wiring uh, to the light bulbs uh, on the back. So we've got 25 feet of 16 gauge wire in the motorhome going from the source of the voltage, normally the battery or the fuse block, and then the uh, 10 foot for the umbilical cord, which is 16 gauge, and then also the typical 16 gauge kit that you would buy at your normal uh, local store uh, that is in the Jeep. So we're going to take these values and plug them in and see what uh, kind of a voltage drop situation we've got. Now one thing I want to make you understand is the uh, wiring in the Jeep is not the Jeep's wiring. It's basically uh, two sets of light bulbs that are stuck to the back of the Jeep which can either be uh, on a magnet as a dedicated unit or what some people do is they drill a second hole in the uh, tail light and put another light bulb in. So the light bulb circuit in the Jeep from the umbilical to the tail light is an independent circuit not connected at all with the Jeep's uh, electrical circuit. Perhaps I should have used a trailer for this drawing rather than a vehicle but just remember uh, that the wiring for the light bulb in the vehicle is independent. So let's plug the values into the formula. We're going to use 110 foot for the total length of wire because of course we have a round trip and the one way distance is 55 feet. Remember 25 feet, 10 feet and 20 feet for the three different segments. And we're using a 16 gauge wire which is actually 2600 circular mils and each light bulb requires two amps for full brightness and the two amp value that's just uh, typical uh, you may find your light bulb is maybe a little more or a little bit less okay so when we solve for the voltage loss uh, using the formula we come up with a 0 0.9 volt loss however there is an issue with this and that is that the taillights uh, the ones that are on all the time when you have your headlights on are typically connected together so in reality that doubles the load so we really have to use four amps for the taillight circuit rather than two amps so we're going to plug that value in and see what happens well now we have a problem because now we have a 1.8 volt loss for the taillight circuit with the four amps uh, worth of load now the traditional rule of thumb is that for anything that's critical like Tail lights and light bulbs uh, for the turn signals, you should have no more than a 3% voltage drop, which means you're looking at about 0 0.36 volts, which would be ideal. And then here we have in excess of a 10% voltage drop for the tail lights themselves. And in fact, if we had running lights on the trailer or something, that would even be worse because the running lights are going to run off the tail light circuit. So in all uh, practicality, this setup is really not a good solution, uh, really not an adequate solution uh, for uh, this trailer uh, combination. And we got to do something to improve it because we're going to have dim light bulbs. Of course, a simple solution is to use the vehicle ground as the negative side, which, you know, the trailer and the uh, RV and camper, towed vehicle, whatever, is probably already doing. Now, remember, when we calculated this, we calculated a round trip value. Well, the vehicle chassis is so massive compared to even 12 gauge that you can basically just disregard it. So what I'm saying is if you're using the vehicle ground, chassis ground for the negative wire, you can uh, cut the round trip distance in half and then just use a one way distance which will greatly minimize the uh, voltage drop. So by using the uh, vehicle's chassis for the ground side, we can use a 55 foot uh, distance rather than a 110 foot distance. 
And now we're looking a lot better. We're at 0 0.9 volt for the taillights and 0 0.5 volts for the brake and turn signals. Of course, that still is marginal. Um, we should try to do a little bit better yet. We really want to strive for no more than a 3% voltage drop if we can, which is about 0 0.36 volts, give or take. So if we use a different iteration of the formula and uh, use a 0 0.36 volt voltage drop, which is 3%, of course, then we turned out that we find that we need a uh, wire with 6,569 circular mils. And when we cross-reference 6,569 circular mils, we find that 12 AWG equals 6,500 circular mils. So that's basically fine. So in this case, 12 AWG would be just fine. However, we also have to remember that we're going to have an interconnect harness between the vehicles, and we're simply not going to find one of those in uh, the 12 AWG size. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep 16 AWG for that uh, segment, which is uh, around 10 feet. So now when we add up each individual segment, uh, we find that the total voltage drop is 0 0.45 volts instead of 0 0.36, which accounts for a 3.75% voltage drop rather than 3%, which is really going to be fine. I mean, you're not going to have any issues, I don't think, with that such that small of a, a difference. So, you know, there's different uh, situations, uh, and you can uh, plug in different values for different runs and come up with the same uh, conclusions that I did. So here's the formula in its different iterations. Uh, it's pretty easy. It's just basic algebra. And uh, you should be able to uh, use whatever values you need and plug them in and come up with the uh, solution that you need. And here are the circular mills for the different wire sizes. This is for AWG, American Wire Gauge. The SAE has different sizes, so don't use that. Of course, you can also use an LED for the taillights, as they only require about one-tenth of the power that incandescent bulbs require. So you'd solve the problem there. The only caveat I have is I have not been able to find any DOT, Department of Transportation, certified LEDs yet. And finally, some of the other questions you have to ask yourself is, do the vehicle's uh, taillights use the same wiring for the trailer lights? If so, you may have to degrade the uh, wiring uh, capability that's in the, the uh, motorhome or uh, towing uh, vehicle. Also, on the trailer, if there is additional running lights, then you may have to increase uh, the uh, taillight circuit wiring even much more than I showed here. Because, of course, you know, each light's going to add more uh, current demand and drop the voltage more. Well, if you've got this far, you know, this is kind of a boring topic. There's some math involved and some theory involved. But, you know, it's something that you got to think about. Especially if you find that your uh, light bulbs look a little dim. Then this may very well be the reason is that you may not have adequate wiring. So, at least this is how you solve that problem as boring as it may be.